So we all know Skyrim is a massive game where you can roam as a thief, warrior, an assassin, a mage or numerous other types of characters. But one thing in the game is hard to avoid and that's crafting. Whether it's alchemy where you create magical potions and deadly poisons amongst other many other things actually to aid you in your adventures or enchanting where you add magic improvements and buffs to weapons, armor and jewelry and even crafting your own staffs at a certain point and smithing which is the art of creating or refining your armor pieces and weapons. However, there's a fourth type of crafting, well it's a kind of sort of crafting skill. So today is just a quick video where we'll be looking at something that is often ignored by most players and that's cooking. And I'm going to show you six recipes that you didn't even know you needed until now and absolutely should be in your inventory. Now, you'll need access to a half fire oven for some of these recipes. The rest can be cooked in a normal pot found all around Skyrim and also some of this food can be found lying around as you wander around Tamriel. So, all that being said, let's just crack on. And the first three are aimed at the more combat and archer types of playstyle. And we'll start with the one that nearly everybody knows and that's vegetable soup, which requires cabbage, potato, leeks and tomato. This is an invaluable thing to have in combat as it restores one point of health per second for 720 seconds, which is okay, but we're not really looking at that. But more importantly, it restores one point of stamina per second for 720 seconds. So with Skyrim's game mechanics, you are allowed to power attack or shield bash so long as you have at least one point of stamina. So as you can see, after eating this soup, you will have unlimited power attacks for 12 minutes. The um, following two recipes are the same, just with slightly different, differing additional effects. So I'll give you the recipes and I'll give a small demo later. Now, as I said before, the next recipe works in a similar vein, and that's a venison stew, which requires one venison, a salt pile, potato, and a leek. It restores 15 points of stamina. It restores one point of stamina for 720 seconds and restores one point of health for 720 seconds, very similar to a vegetable soup. Um, the third in the group is a beef stew which requires raw beef, carrot, salt, pile and garlic. Now this gives you an increase in stamina by 25 for 700, 720 seconds which is actually quite good. It restores two stamina uh, points per second for 720 seconds. So as mentioned before, all combat based players can heavily benefit from these stews, giving you the ability of unlimited power attacks and shield bashes for 12 whole minutes, which is a long time. But also, archery based players can benefit from beef stew, vegetable stew and venison stew as well, as they will be able to zoom in and slow down time more frequently, obviously if you have that perk, and will have extra time to aim their shots more precisely and more often. So I'm going to be using Stendhal's hammer for this demonstration as it's got a ridiculous weight of 100. God knows why they made it so heavy. Um, and I've just nommed a bowl of beef stew and I'm now doing continuous power attacks with uh, a hammer, a war hammer with a weight of 100. It's pretty effective as you can see. Oh, and don't forget to watch my um, mod review on this weapon. It's actually kind of cool. Up next is one of the best of this particular bunch in my opinion and that's Elsewhere Fondue and to make this you need ale, an Ida, cheese wheel, moon sugar and one of the best things to cook in Skyrim as Magicka regenerates 25% faster for 12 minutes and your Magicka is increased by 100 for 12 minutes and obviously the stack. Um, if you're a vampire and have the Necromage Restoration perk, the effects are increased to 31% for Magicka re Regeneration and 125 for Fortify Magicka, along with increased duration of 18 rather than normal 12 minutes. That makes that particular perk really valuable in combination with this um, piece of food here. However, the downsides are some of the ingredients are hard to come by. Moon sugar is hard to come by in Skyrim and can only be looted or is, uh, uh, sold by a few dodgy vendors. You have to go out of your way to find the Ida cheese wheels, which can be stolen at homes or taken if you're friendly with that particular NPC, and can be bought by anyone that sells food, but they don't seem to spawn that often. Um, but just to get you started, they can be stolen at the Sleeping Giant Inn uh, in Riverwood. Some rifted homes uh, may have a cheese wheel or two. 
Now, in Solitude, they can be stolen from the Fletcher Shop, Angeline's uh, Aromatics. Uh, there's a couple in the Hall of Dead in Solitude and two wheels in the kitchen of the Blue Palace uh, uh, again. Uh, and all, I think these all respawn as well. But they can be found in many places, so just keep your eyes open. This is a super thing to have for any mage player or indeed anyone that uses magic as, as part of their gameplay. Next up is something super handy, and that's garlic bread. Now, this cures all diseases, including Sanguinaire Vampiris. With the addition of half fire add on, um, garlic bread can be crafted at an oven with the following ingredients garlic, butter, and bread, strangely enough. It will produce two loaves each time. Uh, once you have access to an oven, garlic bread is one of the best options for removing disease since it is both lightweight and cheap. Uh, as I said before, making garlic bread gives you two loaves as opposed to one potion. Now the downside is you need a home with a kitchen upgrade or you have uh, to build a kitchen and a half fire home. Um, and butter seems to be a rare ingredient for some reason. It can occasionally be bought from vendors and innkeepers or it can be made in your kitchen's butter churn uh, respawning every few days or so. So if you see it, um, grab it. And finally we have the lavender dumpling which requires moon sugar, a sack of flour, two snowberries, lavender and it restores five points of health. Magicka is increased by 10 points for 60 seconds and resist 10% of magic for 60 seconds. Uh, magic resistance is an essential requirement in Skyrim, enabling you to take less damage from magical attacks, including all forms of elemental and dragon breath attacks. So nomming a dumpling for a further 10% resistance is really kind of handy. Uh, the downside is it shares moon sugar ingredient with elsewhere fondue. So you may have to make a choice which one would be more valuable to your play style. Okay, that's it six recipes that you didn't even know you needed till this moment hope you enjoyed the video catch you later love you